and Jeff Kearns in the Quaker Hill Monarchy Muffler Tires Corporation car. It's a Nissan. Starting 19th on the grid, that's car 66. That's John Kembridge from Wallingford. All right, we'll get to the rest of the field. Tony Leckie lets the green flag fly as we are racing at the bowl. One more time. 25 laps of the penny stock. The field is charging around this one-third back mile oval. Fast and hot tonight. Three wide going down into turn number three. The 67 taking out inside line. Brandon Clemens out of North Stonington doing a great job. Well, dirt track off of turn number four. Patrick Burns and Rob Olowski side by side. Olowski in the 49 making a bid for the lead. Olowski running a Nissan up on the high side down on the low groove. That's the front wheel drive Dodge. Olowski by at the line takes over the lead as we have a caution come out. Car number 66 is John Kemperich up in turn number two. He's got it. Green flag flying on the throttle up through the gearbox in the 49. He's trying to make that effort to regain that real estate out in front. Down on the inside. There he goes. But up high. Watch the 98 of Mike Muller start to make his move but doesn't have the torque down the back straight away into turn three. They are getting side by side into turn four. Here we go. They both drifted out up into the wall and it's now coming across the stripe. It's a 49 of Rob Olosky. See Jeff Carnes in the 68 now moving up into the fifth position. Dan Dard said in the 53 currently running six. Carnes moving up on the high side. That's the tough groove around the speedways. It gets real slick up there. Now putting the pressure on is the number two. Ladies and gentlemen, John Deletta making the move, trying to reel in that 49 of Oleski. He's got him in his sights going down into turn number one, closing the gap even more in the turn. Tried to get down low, didn't work for him as the 49 pulled it out, going down the back straightaway. Into three. Now he reels him in one more time, looking for that bottom shot to get around that guy in that Ford number two. Got a battle heating up for the third place. Side by side, it's Michael Muller and Jeff Carnes. Carnes in the 68 on the high side. We got a pile up on the front stretch. It's the 13. Luke Tussing heading backwards down into turn number one. This caution flag does come out once again. Jeff Carnes moving up into that third position. See the 67 of Brandon Plemons getting out of shape, coming out of turn two. Down on the apron, the field rolls by. We stay under green. Eight laps remaining. 18 laps down. So 49 of Rob Olowski still out in front. John Delano running second. You see the black flag coming out for one of the cars. Cars in the 68 doing a great job trying to make the effort to get up underneath, around, through, on top of the 49 car of Olowski, but no doing. He's made that 49 real wide and real high as he gets the white flag. He's got one more lap to go. Let's see if he can hang on and deal with the pressure of Carnes. Carnes doing his best. He's closed up the gap, looks to the outside, tries to see what he can do. Gets the shot off the high side, down into turn number three. He's got the momentum all over the backside, but he doesn't quite have it as the 49 takes the feature. Rob Olaski from East Lime in the 49 for the mini stocks. Get ready to give it up for Rob. Let's hear it for Rob Olaski, ladies and gentlemen. Nice show, Robbie. Nice wave for the crowd. Nice wave for the crowd. There you go. Take the checkered flag, young man. Working his way down to the winner's circle, ladies and gentlemen. Rob, your first feature win. First driver to beat out Carnes and Darstead. How's it feel? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> I didn't think I'd, I, I spun my mirror around at the end because I didn't want to see how close they were because I didn't want to get accused of mirror driving. So I had no idea how close they were. All right, Jeff, you got some sponsors you want to thank? Some people helping you out on the car? I want to thank Concrete Express, Cash Home Center, Robinson. My whole pit crew, they're here every week helping. I just want to thank them. All right, Rob, congratulations. Picking up your first win for the 1995 season. Three. Starting out outside of him, that's the 26 of Darren Mendito. Next in line is the 26, getting ready to take that green flag is Darren Mendito, as we just mentioned. <laughs> starting, out, starting next in line, that's a 31 of Ryan Stone, and it's the 44 of Russ Holly, the 83X of Ed Gersh, and the 3X driven by Mike Alpiero. Tony Lucky left the fly right now, and it's great to start the lot of the team ball, down into turn number one. The number one car pulls it out. I took Got lots of pressure on both sides. Trying to make a sandwich into turn number three, but can't quite do it. Unbelievable. Up on the outside. 
Smith, having a stout heat race for 94. begins to string itself out. Garland running in the third position. That's the 83 of Joe Gambino. J.R. Mancini in the 74. Ernie LaRose in the 22. Also a very strong runner here. Cook, tough time, hanging on to that number one. The driver from Waterford gets his doors blown off a little bit. Going down into turn number three by the 50 X car. Superb driving in with my Mike Caprino. Oh, hard hit for Ernie LaRose, and he lost the wheel going into turn two. LaRose hard into the Armco, coming to stop just coming out of turn two. All right, safety crews on the road right now, jumping right out in front of the field. Nothing stops these guys when it comes to getting over to an incident. remaining in the strictly stock feature, Johnny Gambino. Gabriel Gambino trying to go at it. Here we go, Italian style off of turn number four. Down the front straightaway. Pitch the fender in the turn number one. They bust the front, they bust the jump. Here comes the 50 X on stop. A couple cars in the wall in turn one. Unbelievable bailing going into turn number one. The 97 of Ken Cassidy, Louis Belisle in the 50 L. The 65 of Eric Edgerly. Right out of turn four. 50X of Mike Caprio moves into second. Johnny Gambino taking over that third place, battling with his nephew on the high side. Then it's Bud Keen, Jimmy Belisle, in the 57, high on the up on the high side, but coming down for the win. It's the 94, Charles Bailey. Second place goes to the fix. 50X of Mike Caprio. And it's Johnny Gambino. Let's hear it for Charles Bailey the third. Give it up the the for the winner, Charles five, Bailey, the Pequot Motor Line, Paul TV, Monte Carlo. What a show, what a show. Down with the interview is MG. Charlie, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Owe it all the Pequot Motor Lines from the reservation in Paul's TV, Larry's Automotive for the power under the hood, quality concrete. So, I don't know, something broke on the initial lap, it was vibrating the whole time, and then when the donut fell out, I thought, oh boy, we're going to go backwards on a loss of the horsepower, but it kept rolling, got strong, and I owe a lot to JMD Chassis, as we know, Jay Stewart, he can really hook up a car, a little bit of help. All right, Charlie, now this is your first victory for 95, right? Yeah, first victory is defending the championship, <laughs> a lot of hard luck, I'll tell you. Well, Charles, congratulations, picking up the first win for the 1995 season, many more to you. Thanks a lot, thank you.
71, Jeff Pearl. That's going to wrap up for the first half of this field, ladies and gentlemen. Tony Lucky looking for the start. Green flag action, another four. First lap, Ricky Knapp follows in second. That's the flying zero of Ricky Young. The 82, that's the mystique car for Teddy Christopher, running strong in practice and running strong in his heat way out in front. That's the 19 of George Bruce Jimmy Smith, Scott Spalding, David Gaeta, Bert Marvin in that orange number 07. Then it's Pearl, Saravolo, Cookta, Gaeta, Jimmy Broderick. Keep your eye on the cars on the move, the 21 of Mike Gate up on the high side, along with the 33 of Mark Lajeunesse. Bruce Hewitt also working that high groove up towards the front of the field, and right behind him is the 27 of David Gate, and now working his way around Scott Spaulding down on the inside, battle heating up for that sixth position. Field stretching out, lots of battle going on. It's almost double the distance for these modifiers. We've got a car in trouble. It's the 31 junior, Jimmy Smith, sliding through the infield. Gets that car back on the track and rolling again. Teddy Christopher moving up, battling for that second position. Getting underneath 16 of Rick Knapp. Knapp now slides back to third. The flying zero of Ricky Young now contending with Knapp. Teddy Christopher sitting in that second position right in front of him. The four of Paul Ingalls. Ingalls hanging on desperately to the lead. This is the first time Ingalls has led all year. And he's doing a heck of a job holding back. 82 of Teddy Christopher. Ted Christopher. Green flag down into turn one. What a start by Christopher. Unbelievable. Three wide going between two and three. Unbelievable. These guys touching the bump of the ground and front. Down into turn three. These guys are awesome tonight. Paul Engels not being able to get that car going on the start. You see most of the field now sliding by. Possibly Engels is holding up the field, allowing Christopher to run away. But maybe not as Christopher starts to pull away from second place Marvin. Battling for that third position. Sparks fly. It's David Gaeta on the high side. And that's Todd Saravolo down low. Those two cars bumping through the turns. It's tough when you bump with open wheel cars. But they're doing it. Super driving job by the O7 driver. But he's got pressure of his own. From Jimmy Broderick out of New Milford. Broderick's trying to make the move. He's only got three laps to go to do it. Now we watch Christopher come off a four in fine style. And it looks like he's got an easy lead. Nobody's really contending. The straight mount is the field. Unbelievable. Stretched out all the way back to last spot. Now the twin popsicle sticks are flying for Christopher. Off a turn four. Two laps to go for Teddy Christopher. And a deep motor for his car. He's going to be taking it home if he can stand on the gas and out of trouble. Right behind him, about 12, 15 at least. Behind him, the 07 of Marvin. White flag is out for Christopher. How many times have we seen this in many of the racetracks around Southern New England? Teddy Christopher, the 82 of the Motorsports, modified in the Waterford Speed Bowl. Coming off a of turn number four. Unbelievable. Here he goes. Nice effort by Jimmy Broderick trying to pick up a position, but doesn't get anywhere on that move. He picks up third. In 07, a great drive by Burt Marvin. Unbelievable mod squad racing action at the Waterford Speed Bowl. Unbelievable speed, unbelievable action. 50 laps of modified racing as the Midsummer Modified. Well, the racing is over here at the Waterford Speed Bowl tonight, and we're here with Bonafide Division winner Teddy Christopher. Teddy, this car got banged up last night at Stafford, and I imagine it took a little work to get it here this evening, huh? Yeah, Eddie Flunky drives it at uh, Stafford on Friday night, and he got in the jingle with somebody, and right front was banged pretty bad, the nerf bar of the door, 
And uh, we fixed all that. Got there early this morning. The crew showed up. Uh, fixed all that stuff. We had to change the rear end ratio because this place is a lot different than Stafford. And uh, scaled it. Got here late. Missed the... I got here after the car got here. So I missed the first warm-up. And they had somebody else break in some tires on it. Now, you started up front, which obviously has got to be an advantage with a fast race car, I would think, huh? Yeah, it is. You know, I like starting in the back end. We put, we were, this car is really, really fast, a lot faster than I've ever seen anybody go here. And, uh, it, I mean, I would like, I like starting from the back and coming up front, but it can be dangerous to this place. You never know what's going to happen. And when you have a fast race car, you start up front like that, it makes it easier, you know, because you get up front and then you just take off. And that's about basically what we did. Now, next weekend is a, is a tough weekend for you. You're going to run the, maybe the, probably the tour show at New Hampshire uh, and the gonna, Bush car. Yeah. Uh, will we see you here? I don't know. See, the Bush race goes off first, and then there's the modified shootout after that, and I don't think we'll probably get done until maybe like 5 o'clock. I, I could line up a plane to get down here, but we don't we don't know how the car is going to be after Tuesday night. See, the car race is Tuesday night with Eddie driving it, and then we have to just set it up again for Saturday and get somebody to bring it down here, so it probably isn't a reality to be here. How about after that? Now, you ran the 88 car for a while. This car ran very well. What's the, your uh, situation for the rest of the season? Well, John's car works real well. It just was really down on power, and Larry's auto machine was uh, offered to put a motor together for us on that deal, and he's, I gave him a bunch of pieces, and he's going to put a motor together. Uh, we're probably still going to run John's. It got banged up real bad last week when the guy hit us, and uh, probably won't be back for a couple of weeks with that. But if we're not back with that in a couple of weeks, maybe we'll take this car. You know, We won with it the first time we were coming down here, so the owner would probably be real happy. But uh, I don't know. It's like a week-to-week basis. We'll see. We're not really sure where we're really going. Great. Okay. Well, I guarantee the way Teddy Christopher runs here, you're going to see some more of them the rest of the season. Base car getting ready to take that hard left turn into the turn number five. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Setting the pace right now in the 74. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Billy Boyle taking his replay. Billy Boyle gets the jump on the start, Raina. Ron Angiolo slides back to second in that 43X. Ron working that high group. Then it's the 25 of Mike Zaransky, rookie driver out there showing his stuff, running in that third place. But here comes the 8 of Mark St. Hilaire, the 10 of Ron Slack, and Gary Harson in the 12. Rob Janovic in the 51, also showing very strong today, trying to work his way up to the front. Billy Boyle doing a great job of holding off the back, but up on the outside. Here comes that number 43, unbelievable John Monsanto out of Northford. He's throttling the high side, a little bit out of shape, lost the momentum, gathers it back up. Now the front straightaway into one, he's still on the outside. Underneath him, in the number eight is Mark St. Hilaire out of Bristol. Angelo once again working that high side, getting up alongside of Billy Boyle coming out of turn four. Looks like they're going to be dead even at the line. St. Hilaire sticks the nose of his number eight down to make it three wide going into turn one. Something's got to give, and this is the 74 of Billy Boyle. Slips back to third. The eight of St. Hilaire works up in the second, but Rob Janovic spins coming out of turn two as he comes to rest down on the apron in a cloud of dust. Janovic unable to get that car refired as the caution flag comes out. Three laps down, 47 laps remaining in this late model feature. Five laps, halfway, coming across the stretch to the number eight, ladies and gentlemen, Mark St. Hilaire. Coming out across the line in second, that's the 89 of Larry Cody, the 7X of Mark Atkinson. Running fourth is the three of Tom Fox, and it's a battle for fifth place. Ron Angiolo and Gary Hartz, another battle for sixth. It's Phil Rondo, Matt Kobluck, and Danny Fields all trying to take up that same position. Looks like the number 12 car from my vantage point. Harson has the setup, but he doesn't quite have the power the 43X does. 43X has a little shitty in a shake off of turn four, loses some momentum, gives the cross car an advantage to come up on the back side. They're almost nose to tail and take away the three. The 12 car definitely creeps up on him in the turn. Looking at the bottom side, cuts it real hard, too hard. God, I'm out of shape. He hangs on to it, stupor, heads up trying to... Oh, a hard crash oh, on a front stretch. By the number 10 car right in front of us. Oh, got a tough hit. Rob Janovic oh. also getting collected for the night of Tim Menyard. We'll ask you all to please step back from the fence. Yeah, step back from the fence, folks. We so don't got a want lot of anybody getting anything on them. If you get through the fence hole. There's a lot of hot liquid coming out of those automobiles. You can see some steam and a lot of fluid. Janovic taking a hard shot into the side door of Ron Slack. Unbelievable. Did not see how that play coming off a of turn four. We're watching the front runners. Unbelievable hit. The 51 car is really shortened up. Rob Janovic, let's see if we can get some word on his status as we get the officials right now. So we are in a red flag condition. We do see the ambulance rolling up in turn four. Just going to come down and check out the drivers, make sure that they are all right. 
Okay, they're talking to the driver of the number 10 car from what we understand right now, Ronnie Slack. And as soon as we get word, we will pass it on to you. Please, ladies and gentlemen, step away from the fences, please. Please step away from the fences, work with the security people, because we don't want any of this stuff getting up in you. You see the fumes, the radiators and stuff, you don't want to get any of this in your lungs. Step back from the fence, please. You see a little bit of a fire under the hood of Janovic's car, possibly broke a fuel line off. 